Hey Space Monkeys, I'm here to show you a quick video on how to do the Scorpion. This is the first of three movements I recommend on a pretty regular basis to help you offset or at least begin to offset your pattern of spiral. And the pattern I have is a counterclockwise spiral that is a spiral to the right. So my right ribs and right hip tend to rotate forward in this direction along with my right shoulder. And consequently, that also means that my ability to rotate my neck to the right is not as good typically as it is to rotate to the left. So I'm a little tighter in this movement than I am in this movement. And remember, our spiral patterns are global, so they're reflected throughout the entire body. That's why we're using global movements to offset them. So this first one's called the scorpion. You're gonna lay down on the floor, face down, prone, like this. And you're gonna put your arms out in a T, like this. And remember, I'm offsetting a right side spiral, so I'm going to use my right foot, and I'm going to lift it up and let my hip come off the ground and roll back and try to put my right foot in my left hand. So here, because of my camera angle, you can't quite see what I'm doing there, but I'm rolling up so you can see, I'm grabbing my right foot with my left hand and I'm rotating back. But my shoulders are pinned somewhat against the ground. This right shoulder can come up a little bit. It's not essential that we keep the right shoulder down, but really the essence is to get a nice rotation, a spin. And I'm also gonna look over my right shoulder, in this case, towards the camera. And we can use a contract relax stretch method when I do my scorpion. And what that'll look like is I'm gonna inhale. And as I inhale, I'm gonna focus on expanding this area of the ribs here and feeling the intercostal muscles, intercostal muscles expand and feel volume in this side of my rib cage. I'm also going to reach away with this right hand and I can even make a Spider-Man hand like this and rotate it externally, thumb away from the center line like this, pushing my palm away and I'm also pushing my right knee this way. So I'm trying to close my right hip but I'm holding the leg with my hand, my left hand. So there's a tension between the right foot and the left hand. I'm pulling those two opposite each other to make length in the front side of the hip and the quad. You might feel it in the front of your hip here as you're open. You might feel it in your quad or you might feel it along this whole front line or maybe you'll feel it somewhere else. Depends on where you're tight. And when I inhale, I'm gonna create that tension. And then when I exhale, I'm gonna relax the kicking of the knee or the, the driving of the knee, but I'm gonna to continue to pull with the hand gently and see if I can get more length out of this side. So I'll go through one rep so that you can see what that looks like. So again, set up here in my T position. I'm looking over my right shoulder. I'm gonna reach back with my right hand. I'm going to grab it with uh, sorry, my right foot, that's my foot, not my hand, and I'm gonna grab it with my left hand. I'm gonna reach with this right arm, externally rotate the hand, Spider-Man, I'm gonna inhale, exhale, relax, inhale, feel the ribs expand, exhale, relax. Inhale one more time. And as I do that, I'm driving this right knee forward this way into my hand and then exhale, relax the drive and pull deeper. Now, come out of the spiral slowly. Don't just jump up to your feet. Let things settle a bit. If you can't, if you don't have enough movement or range of motion to get this right foot all the way back to your left hand, use a belt or use uh, a yoga strap or use a stretchy band and put it in your hand 
and then loop it around your foot. You might have to do a little wrangling to make that happen, but we wanna have tension in this system here to open the hip on this side while we're twisting. So we're working with the breath, we're working with the twisting force, and we're also working on the eccentric load of the muscles. That is, we're tensioning the muscles in the front of the quad as they're getting longer. I feel that primarily here in this area, uh, the obliques and the transverse abdominis. You might feel it more in the quad, especially if you have quite tight quads, you're gonna feel it there. That's movement number one, the scorpion. Hey there, Space Monkeys. I'm back to explain the second exercise in our daily routine to offset your spiral pattern. Again, as a reminder, I have a spiral pattern to the right. That means my ribs tend to rotate forward this way when I'm in a hip hinged position or just in general. And so I'm gonna be explaining my spiral offset move from that perspective. If you're a lefty, and your spiral pattern is clockwise from the top or left side forward, then you're gonna to wanna to reverse my cues and reverse everything I'm doing. Or just turn your phone upside down and watch it that way. Something like that. Okay, so for this move, we're gonna be standing. We can call this the twisted or spiral pillar. And as you might predict, we're going to undo the spiral pattern that we have in our uh, cycling position. So that means we're gonna be working on a right hip spiraling backwards. So we're going to start with our feet about shoulder width apart, hands can be at our side, and what I'm going to do is take my right foot and step behind my left foot, but back behind it at a 45 degree angle. So my feet are now about maybe hip width, hips width apart, and they're as far four aft from each other as they are side to side. So I'm making a box with my feet. Does that make sense? But notice that my toes are still pointed straight ahead towards the camera. I don't know if you can quite see that in this view, I think you can. But my toes are pointed straight ahead. So my foot, my back foot is an angle like this. It's not angled like this, nor is my front foot angled like this or like this. They're both straight ahead. And we're making a box with our feet. I'm gonna take my left hand and place it about where my left kidney is. And then I'm gonna take my right hand and reach up towards the ceiling. And then I'm gonna side bend to my left. And I'm gonna look up to the left, to the right, even with my eyes. And as I do this, I'm gonna inhale and stretch and reach. And I'm even gonna spiral my hand. And I'm gonna look up towards the sun reaching my chin, spiraling to the right, inhaling and getting as tall as I can. So I'm driving into my feet and I'm also reaching as far as I can. I'm being as long as I can, but still also focusing a bit on side bending to the left. We want this curved orientation to the ribs here, but we also want the, the right shoulder to be slightly behind the hip. So I'm opening and side bending here. And then I'm gonna exhale and come back to start and then inhale. Reaching, breathing, twisting the arm, the hand, rotating the way, rotating the eyes, even looking with the eyes. The eyes are part of the fascial system. Exhaling, relaxing, and I'll do one more. We might do six or eight reps of this. Feeling the space in between my ribs and the right side of the rib cage, and then exhaling. Now, if you want to, you can do some to both sides. So we could step over with the left foot behind the right, put my right hand on my right kidney and also spiral to this side. If you choose to do that, I would recommend we do half as many to your non-spiral side as to your spiral side. 
So if you're a righty, I would recommend you could do four to the left and eight to the right. You could alternate one and 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 one. Sorry. And then do the remainder on the right side only, or you could front load the, remain the first four reps on the right side and then go back and forth between the two if you wanted to, however you want to play it. Um, I don't know that that's super important, but I will say that it's important to do more work on the side we're trying to unspiral than on the side that is already spiraled, because it's not just that you're rotated forward here, it's that you're correspondingly, we'll say, unspiraled on the left relative to neutral. I don't know if that's technically the right way to say it, but in any case, the point is we want to get more spiral in the correct direction to help us achieve more neutral. So we're not quite so twisted this way, especially when we're on the bike. So there's your twisted pillar or spiral pillar exercise. Again, six to eight reps on the side that needs correction or um, optimization. So for this one, I'm sitting on the floor because we're gonna want to use some sort of surface we can pull on. It could be a doorknob, it could be a dining room table, it could be some kind of table leg, as long as whatever you're pulling on is stable and isn't gonna move on you. So I'm using this bookshelf as something I'm gonna pull on with my left arm. And also what we wanna do is take our socks off. We want a floor that's gonna give you a surface you can dig into and have some grip on. We don't want you sliding around, right? So what this is is a series of lunges. And again, I'm offsetting my right spiral pattern, so I'm gonna focus on the right leg for this series of lunges. So what we're gonna do is assume a split stance. And the split stance is gonna look about like this. I'm gonna start with my feet about, about hip width apart, between hip and shoulder width apart and I'm going to offset my feet also fore aft the same distance as the width. So I'm making a box with my feet. And I'm gonna pull this left heel off the ground. Sometimes when I say left heel, people wanna do this. They wanna have their whole foot off the ground. I didn't say foot, I said heel. So we're making a box, left heel's off the ground, ball of the foot is on the ground. I want about 90% of my weight in my front foot. And I also want my toes to be floating. So I want 90% of the weight in my front foot and most of that weight to be in the heel. I wanna have contact with the ball of the foot and contact with the fifth metatarsal, that's the ball of the pinky toe. I wanna to feel those touching the floor, but I'm gonna hang my toes right off the edge of this carpet so I can feel them float. And that's a reminder that I want most of the weight in my heel. And I'm gonna grab my table or my uh, doorknob or whatever about so that the about the height so that when my torso is horizontal my arm is straight forward see how there's a nice tight line between my hip my shoulder and my hand that's what I'm going for and I want my hand to be in this orientation ideally not this orientation I want it to be vertical thumbs up like a hitchhiker not horizontal like on a mountain bike bar and so what I'm going to do is a series of lunges. And during each lunge, I'm gonna work with the breath. And as I lunge down, I'm gonna exhale. And as I exhale, I'm gonna drive with this right glute here into the right heel hard. And I'm gonna drive the heel forward, simultaneously pulling back with the left arm. And what that's gonna do is create a tension pattern across my torso, the backside of my torso, from the contralateral hip and shoulder. And when I pull back with the shoulder, I wanna pull down like this so that I'm pulling with the lats. I'm pulling my shoulder down and back. I'm not hiking my, my shoulder way up towards my ear and then yanking back like this. I'm doing it from this a more of a stable neutral position and I'm pulling down from my lats. So I'm feeling the muscles in my back here or the sensation is that I'm pulling, you might say with the ribs, right? That's the area from which you wanna initiate the pull. So, here I'm in my split stance, equidistant this way and this way, feet in a box, rear foot is off the ground, that is rear heel, not the foot. 
I'm going to put this other right arm is also going to be on my table or maybe grabbing the door frame, but it's really passive. And as I start a little high, I'm going to exhale and drop down into this right hip and really drive the right heel into the ground, simultaneously pulling with the left arm. And I should feel some tension in the center of my back. And then relax. And inhale, and then exhale. Sink into that lunge. I should feel my ribs on the right side close to my thigh, or I should feel maximal um, hip flexion here. Not very big angle here. I don't want to be up like this. I don't want to have a big gap between my thigh and my ribs. I want to be down here, pushing this heel down, which will drive this hip back. I should feel tension in this glute. So I'm pushing the heel away from me this way, and I'm pulling with this left arm. But here's the most important part of this exercise. I'm gonna orient myself this way and do it again without any doorknob, just to show you the critical alignment here. As I drive forward into this hip, what will happen is the alignment of the center line of my body will shift if I'm not engaging these muscles correctly. So what will happen is the alignment of my sternum, which is here, or my belly button or the top of my pubic bone will change. So when I drive into this hip, if I don't have a lot of hip strength or stability, what's going to happen is this hip's going to kick out to the side. And we're going to see this sort of angled orientation to the femur. What I want, see the difference? What I want is a nice tidy line here and here. I want this center line to stay the same as I initiate the drive and as I pull here. Because what I'm trying to do is set up a twisting pattern like this, but I'm resisting and I'm building resistance in that twisting pattern. This is the same pattern that we have trouble with on the bike. When you drive with the right leg, the hip shifts and drops. So we're recreating that pattern here and we're teaching you to offset it by driving to the heel and activating the glutes on the lateral aspect of your hip, right? So tensor fasciolata, TFL, and glute med and glute min and glute max can all contribute to that hip being more stable under load and for this alignment to stay for us to offset the spiral. That's what we're doing here. We're, we're doing this, we're just, creating an exercise that isolates that aspect of the spiral and sort of magnifies it or zeroes in on it. So that's the, the point of this exercise is to do that. So you really have to watch your own knee alignment. Uh, really what we're looking for is three points. The center of the foot, which we could define as the second and third toe. So right in here. And the center of the knee, which you can define as this little bump below your patella. That's your tibial tuberosity. Tuberosity just means bump. And the center of the hip. And we want those to stay in line. And we also want our sternum, belly button, and pubic bone to stay in line, right? So when we're in this initial setup, we're nice and neutral here. Meaning I've got a nice triangle line. If I were to draw a line from my sternum to my belly button, it would go down and get right approximately in between the center of my feet. But if I start doing my exercise, driving my hip and pulling here and everything goes like this, then I've lost my alignment. See that? So when I drive down, I wanna stay in this alignment. It looks like this. Pulling with the left hand, driving with the right glute, hard. You should also be able to palpate your own butt cheek here and feel all these muscles firing. When you palpate a muscle and you feel that it is turned on, you'll feel that it is, it's hard. The fibers are firing, they're working. If it's squishy, they're not working. So you often wonder like, are my glutes firing? Well, I don't know. Go poke yourself in the butt. Find out. You can palpate to find out if your own muscles are firing. So this helps you make that neural connection. What's working and what isn't. So here I am driving into that right glute, keeping the, the alignment of the sternum, pulling here on the doorknob or the table leg and making sure this is turned on and I'm not letting it twist. I'm not letting it fall this way, right? I'm not letting anything rotate or slide out of alignment in any way. And this exercise is just simply a body weight drill. We want to do six to eight reps, nice and slow and controlled. It can be a good activation before your ride. If you want to go deeper and take it to fatigue, then I would recommend you do that after your ride. You don't want to fatigue these muscles and blow them out and then go ride your bike because then you're probably going to run into problems. 
right? You're going to be riding with muscles that are fatigued and you won't be able to ride in an optimal pattern. However, we can fatigue them later after your ride if you want to go that route. Uh, a total, a good guideline for this type of exercise, a body weight exercise is working towards around three minutes of time under tension. That's what's up. I hope you find that helpful. Go ride your bike.